What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on this Tuesday, June 21st date, uh, 2022. It's about 11.43 a.m. California time. Still technically morning here, just before noon. A 1.5 earthquake. The latest quake on the globe up here around the Alaska region, it looks like. We are still seeing some activity ramping up into portions of uh, California. Let's go ahead and check out the latest map here. Uh, from the USGS showing some of that movement up in Alaska and also over here along the west coast where we're still seeing a little bit of swarming going on here around the uh, Long Valley Super Volcano looking at a total uh, earthquake tally of about 57 earthquakes within the last 24 hours uh, but if we go back over the last seven days or so uh, within this region of the swarm we'll go ahead and zoom in here to the swarm I uh, got about 131 earthquakes for a total and uh, obviously a little bit of migration over the past week or so of the earthquakes themselves. Uh, looks like uh, so far today, only one 2.5, and that was from uh, yesterday actually. So we haven't seen any further uh, larger magnitudes here around the Long Valley Super Volcano. I kind of put out a little bit more informational video on this activity last night so if you didn't get a chance to check it out go watch it uh, on the channel my last video um, the uh, depth of these earthquakes are still consistent very shallow earthquake activity the negative here is in correlation with the sea level right so negative one kilometer would be uh well one kilometer um uh, above sea level so these are very surface or very shallow surface quakes here taking place and uh, we have seen low activity continue into the morning time frame in that area. Also a little movement in the uh, Southern California area. Looks like uh, 1.6 out here around the Holtville, California area. Uh, pretty shallow in this region as well near the uh, Chocolate Mountains. Yummy. Uh, and the Sand Hills area. Not a whole lot going on on the San Andreas Fault. We did see some movement last night there on the Southern segment uh, with a 0.7. Nothing big. Uh, but if we start seeing some swarming around that area, then definitely we'd be uh, a little bit more worried about the potential for a big one. Uh, the Bay Area along the Calaveras Fault Zone has seen some noticeable increase in activity as well. A bunch of microquakes kind of bunching up here near the San Jose area. Um, for now, that's well, they are just microquakes, but uh, still got to watch this, uh, these fault areas around the Bay Area. Uh, very capable of producing some sizable quakes. Uh, Nevada, what do we got in Nevada? Some movement out here, out in the uh, Cane Spring Canyon. Caliente, Nevada, that sounds hot. Maybe not as hot as California though. It's supposed to be uh, 105 today, 108 tomorrow here where I live. So man, that's a stay inside all day type of week. Uh, some movement up through Yellowstone, it looks like, as well, and into Idaho, part, portions of uh, Montana as well, seeing some movement. Let me check out the latest activity up here in Yellowstone, see what we got uh, for activity. Not a whole lot. Uh, there's at least one earthquake around here in Moose Creek, Idaho area, uh, showing up on the Pitchstone Plateau area. There's no, not a whole lot of swarming going on here around the Yellowstone area today, just some uh, spotty earthquake movement down south. Uh, that's probably going to be this uh, 3.0 that kicked up there in the Georgetown, Idaho area earlier. Uh, out around Texas, Pecos, Texas, showing some movement here again. Twos um, showing up on the board. Oklahoma, aside from Aquarius Blast, looks pretty quiet. This earthquake out here around the New Madrid zone uh, from uh, last night uh, looks like a 2.2. Eastern part of the country remains pretty quiet. A little activity around the Puerto Rico area again today. Of course, very typical of some swarming. And over here around the Haiti area, uh, this one coming in earlier, uh, well, late last night, early this morning, a 4.1. Uh, since then, we've seen a couple, it looks like a 2 and a 3.7 around the Puerto Rico area within the last couple hours. Puerto Rico, or the uh, Peru Chile Trench, looking... Um, well, it did have a little bit of movement last night. It looks like a couple upper fours um, into the Peru Chile Trench. Not uh, not a whole lot of deep activity. Most of this is shallow. Uh, some movement down here around the South Sandwich Islands last night. 
5.0. Uh, up here in Alaska, of course, got uh, a little bit of movement kicking up here into the uh, the mainland and a little activity out here around the Aleutian Trench, a little swarm of uh, some microquakes kicking off here in this area of the uh, Aleutian Trench. A little spotty activity throughout the Philippine plate today. We did have a earthquake. This one here came in as a 6.0 um, about, ooh, when was it? About 12.30, 1 o'clock a.m. my time. Uh, I was sleeping, so I did not see this come in. Originally came in as a 6.0 from the EMSC model, downgraded just a little bit to a 5.9. Uh, right there on the Philippine plate, the eastern section of it, north of the uh, Mariana Trench. A couple different trenches up here. Um, and that one, though, pretty shallow. 10 kilometers for that earthquake. We got one uh, 4.6 here, east of the Coral Islands. This one came in, uh, I think, just prior to the 5.9. It's a little activity trying to work its way up here around Japan. We have seen quite a bit of deep movement throughout the Philippines and areas around the um, Taiwan area over the last couple of weeks. So a uh, good possibility we could be looking at some adjustment coming up around the Japan Trench and the Kurokamachaka Trench very soon. Vanuatu, a little activity yesterday kicking in. Since then, we've seen a couple fours kicking up here around the Tonga region. Look at this little activity up here around Samoa. Uh, this activity coming in uh, last night, a couple fours, very shallow earthquake activity for the most part here. And of course, down here in the Fiji Islands area, some super deep movement. Looks like we had one overnight, a 4.4 at 590 kilometers. This other one here uh, was from uh, yesterday. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Not a whole lot going on for the 4.0 and above map over here around Afghanistan. Just one earthquake from la uh, yesterday time frame. The EMSC model. Uh, let's see if we got anything else going on here. Looks like a little activity off the coast of Iran. And um, some movement showing up here on the New Zealand region. This was from yesterday. Uh, but I don't think the USGS ever picked up on these uh, couple small earthquakes that occurred here. There's a couple more threes uh, that have taken place over there around the New Zealand area that uh, USGS not picking up on. Uh, tremor map from last night was pretty quiet, folks. Well, not super quiet, but it was 99 epicenters, uh, but no major broad scale tremor activity event going on yet. We'll see what that looks like a little bit later tonight as they come in and update uh, the uh, forecast, or not the forecast, but the, uh, <laughs> the epicenter map. Uh, let's see, Mount St. Helens got uh, the seismograph stations here. Let's see if we got anything uh, going on today, this morning, in terms of earthquake activity. And a little bit. There's some S waves right here. Looks like that's from the, uh, that's got to be from the 5.9 that struck um, just south of Japan late last night around one in the morning so notice that aside from that there was some some microquake activity but it looks like it's died off since the uh since the 5.9 struck i've always said whenever we see some adjustment over here along the western section of the pacific plate things tend to ease up here uh, and hence we haven't seen a whole lot of um not a whole lot compared to yesterday we haven't really seen a whole lot of activity around the long valley super volcano uh, just got one within the last hour and then a couple spotty earthquakes over the over the morning time frame <clears throat> so it kind of looks like things just kind of you know mellowed out a little bit with the adjustment here along the uh, western portion of the philippine or of the uh, pacific plate but not completely just just a little bit of release uh let's see what else we got here folks um <clears throat> it's hot already 95 degrees out and it's uh it's only 11 52 a.m not even noon yet what's going on here solar weather activity uh we did see a sea flare looks like kind of a long duration sea flare kick off here a little bit ago um c5.6 
see where this is coming from. Looks like maybe uh, looks like maybe one of the far side sunspots possibly produced that. I didn't see it come up here uh, when it came in, but uh, looks like yeah, it kind of looks like the, maybe one of the far side uh, sunspots there on the western limb. We do have some activity kind of facing us and a little bit of new movement over here, or at least new development around the eastern limb. Let's see, this one, again, this image is a little bit older. It will update, of course, here shortly. Uh, and of course, the dynamics, it looks pretty, uh, somewhat impressive for 3038. But again, this has shifted a little bit more uh, in this direction from this older image. Uh, some further development, as I mentioned here, around the southeastern portion of the limb of the sun's limb here looks like uh maybe some maybe a little bit of development up here as well we'll keep an eye on it over the coming days but uh for now it looks like uh just minimal threat 90 percent chance of c flare 30 percent chance of an m flare x flare remains at 10 percent uh, no major coronal holes facing us currently um but there is a little bit of elevated kp index forecasted for the june 23rd time frame with a 55% chance for some storming at the higher latitudes. So we'll see how that goes. All right, guys, going to keep it short. Uh, we'll be back a little bit later on. Uh, close to 10 minutes, about 11 minutes here for an update. So stay safe, folks. Um, again, you know, a little pause in activity into the uh, California region. But uh, I, I, like I say, these swarms, they kind of come and go whenever... Uh, it's, I've seen them in the past at Yellowstone and Southern California, all over the place. So it's always good to be on guard whenever we start seeing swarming. It's obviously, uh, you know, I think a, a better chance of, of seeing something larger happen when we get these little swarms like that. So just be on guard, stay safe out there, and we will chat you guys a little bit later tonight unless something major happens. Stay safe and stay cool if you're in the heat like me. I know a lot of the country is. Take care, guys. Catch you later.